2021 came and went, and The Legend of Zelda's 35th anniversary felt like it didn't even happen. For one of the most popular and influential gaming franchises in the world, this feels a bit... UNACCEPTABLE! I'm here one year later with this video to tell you how bad Nintendo fucked up such an important anniversary for one of their biggest franchises. But before we begin, it really helped me if you dropped a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Also, let me know what you think about how Nintendo handled this anniversary, and if you think they'll do better for the next one. Now, let's talk about what we actually got. Nintendo's birthday gift to one of their biggest and most successful franchises turning 35 years old was... A Game & Watch Hound Held, a remastered version of one of the least popular games in the franchise, and a set of blue Joy-Cons. That's about it. The Game & Watch was a revolutionary device in 1980. The one released for Zelda's 35th anniversary was loaded with three games. The Legend of Zelda, Zelda 2, The Adventures of Link, and Link's Awakening. All very solid games on their own, but not for $50. Not even as a collector's item does $50 feel worth it. Maybe if they threw in a literal sword, then perhaps I would consider this as a purchase. Second, I'm not saying it's bad we got a Skyward Sword remaster, but this game really isn't known for getting people excited for the series. I haven't ever met anyone who's told me that Skyward Sword is their favorite Legend of Zelda game. And if they did, I simply wouldn't believe them. Nintendo did fix the motion controls so that they weren't necessary, but the game remains a controversial choice, to say the least. Third, the Joy-Cons. I have nothing negative to say about the Joy-Cons. They were cool, and I'm a sucker for color variations and franchise-specific hardware. I actually kind of wish Nintendo would make more of these for different games. I think it's very cool, and I think it's a very missed opportunity that they aren't doing more with variations on Switch Joy-Cons and Switch consoles. Many people were expecting some sort of port for the Twilight Princess and Wind Waker Wii U HD remasters, but they never came. I even hoped for a limited edition Switch console, but that also never came. Sadly, all we received was disappointment. At the end of the announcement, we also got another trailer for Breath of the Wild 2 and a 2022 release date announcement. Sadly, we now know that the game will not be released in 2022 and has been pushed to release in 2023. Everyone knows the age-old saying that gets brought up literally every time a Nintendo game gets delayed. A delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad. Which was supposedly said by Shigeru Miyamoto when working on Ocarina of Time back in 1996. Except for the fact that there is literally no evidence that this was ever said by him. But even with that in mind, it is still wildly disappointing we won't get this even as a holiday release for 2022. Maybe for the 40th anniversary we'll get something better. Looking at how Nintendo handled Donkey Kong's 40th anniversary, I highly doubt it. 